Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amora Love and this is... My name is Rafael Perez. I am the co-founder of Piafia Co, which is a lash brand. Hello cute. Hella cute, y'all. Oh, you're gonna see it in a vlog. I vlogged the shoot for his stuff twice. So you're gonna see his lashes and we're actually gonna use his lashes today. They are absolutely amazing. Like if you want lashes that look like individuals, these ones are 1996. Amazing, I'll leave the link in the description. But today we're basically gonna be getting ready and we're gonna be doing our base the same way we normally do our base. But there's a plot twist. He's gonna be teaching me how to do eyeshadow. Cause I can do a little something, something but I can't do like intricate stuff. So he's gonna teach me step by step and I have to do everything he does and follow every single step, okay? So bear with me, I'm trying. <laughs> but we're basically just gonna get into it and get started. It's so easy. I think a lot of people get um, flustered, yeah. but it's easier than you think. I and do. you'll after this session you'll leave like wanting to do your eyeshadow more often which i is hope nice. so because <laughs> i'll be trying like sometimes i'll just sit there and practice and then i'll look in the mirror and i'm like oof I don't know, because I have a lot of eyelid space going on. Mm -hmm. I also have hooded eyes that hoods more than once on this eye. So it's just a lot going on. So he's going to teach me. So we're going to okay. get it together. Now we can get started. <laughs> okay, so do you want to do our base first or do you want to do eyes first? I think we should do our face first. It always all depends on like what look I'm going for. If I feel like it's going to be too dramatic and I'm going to have a lot of fallout, then I'll do eyes. But for this look, I think we can do face, face. face. yeah, okay, and cool. then eyes. Cool. I love doing face first anyway. For my face, I'm gonna start with Yves Saint Laurent Face Primer. That's Yves Saint Laurent? Yep. What? what is you know what's crazy? I used to have really oily skin. Mm -hmm. I recently started using retinol, which I feel oh, I love. is drying up my skin. Oh, really? But I like it because having really oily skin and then now like it being more drier, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, I'm using um, the Too Faced Multi Sculpting Concealer. I am in the shade Warm Beige. I love this stuff. You can do so much with this stuff. I start with a color correcting for underneath my eyes. I'm using the Bobbi Brown Peach Corrector and it's just going underneath my eyes. I look crazy. I didn't use a peach corrector in a minute. I oh, hope my hair doesn't get in the way. I look so crazy, y'all, but it's okay. It's a part of the process. Okay? Yes, trust the process. <laughs> right. What part of doing your makeup do you like the most? I like doing my face. Oh, like in which step? Yeah. Oh, damn. But which one do you enjoy? I like most? blending everything together because the way I do my makeup now, I mm -hmm. would just apply each step. I do all the steps at the same time and blend it together, and that has been my new favorite like go to. Like this, I'm gonna just let it sit here and do its thing and let it get tacky. And then I blend it out, even though I look crazy. Like <laughs> the masterpiece of it all is absolutely amazing. I love doing it like this. I feel like once it gets tacky, it stays in place more. Yeah. And it um it doesn't sheer out as much. It has more fuller coverage. If you were to say your top two foundations, what would you say? It would have to be Born This Way foundation mm -hmm. and is it called Smashbox? Oh yeah. The, the studio skin or something. Okay. Is that what it is? It's literally over there. Let me see because that's my go-to. This oh, shit right yeah. here, this has been my what I my rider that for years since I started purchasing foundation that wasn't bare minerals. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work for Smashbox. Oh really? I worked for Smashbox oh, for uh, so six cool. months. Yeah. Wow. And now I'm with Dior and honestly, if you haven't tried it, you need to try it really? forever. It's amazing. I've been hearing about yeah, it. Yeah, it has skincare infused into the foundation Ooh. and it just gives you like super lightweight color. Coverage, but it gives you a full coverage, but it's not like super like heavy on your skin, which is really nice. I love products like that. Yeah. I hate cakey products. Do you use a uh, brush or sponge for your foundation? I've been so in love with brushes lately. I use Sephora brushes. Yeah. These two get my whole job done. However, since I started cream contouring, I've been using this little refan brush I got off Amazon that came in a set of like 10 for $15. Oh, wow. I'm like, what? $15? That's crazy. <laughs> but they're just a little shorter than the average brush, but yeah. they're so good. Like all these ones right here are all from the same collection and I use them every single time I do my makeup. You know, I recently went back to using a brush. I feel like a brush gives you more coverage, same. but I always go back and forth between a brush and a sponge, just depending on like my mood and stuff. But I I'm not mad at either one. 
Yeah, I used to be hardcore beauty blender, and then all of a sudden, I discovered a brush, yeah. and I never went back. I haven't <laughs> used a beauty blender in a minute, and every time I try to use one, I end up picking up the brush to finish it off, so now I just don't bother. <laughs> oh, I used the same multi-sculpting brand for my contour as well, like I did for the highlight, I mean the concealer. Yeah. I didn't mention that, my bad. And that is the shade Spiced Rum. Oh, nice. I used the whole the concealer, contour, and foundation for my face as my base. For your skin, would you say you're more oily or more dry? I feel like I'm normal. Like, say I'm using Proactive or something, uh -huh. it'll make me dry. Like, I feel like my skin goes based off what products I'm using and how much I'm using them. Yeah. Like, if I stay consistent, my skin is perfect. But if I don't, I'll get, like, a pimple so it doesn't make me acne-prone skin. I don't know what the fuck. I feel like normal, though, because yeah. I don't be that oily but I don't be hella dry but some washes some face washes dry me out so I don't know if that counts as me having dry skin well I think maybe it's just products that might be drying out your skin mm -hmm. yeah because I for the longest would go like an hour or two sometimes without putting moisturizer in my skin oh my gosh would be so oily <laughs> oh really but yeah and wow. I hated it sometimes also like I would do my makeup mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even be at the club or at a party mm -hmm. and my skin was already like super like oily. Oh and wow. I would hate that. Like, so then yeah, it. I don't think I have oily skin mm -hmm. if it's based off that. If you were to be stranded in an island, mm -hmm. what would you say a product that you would Ooh. have to have? Have to have? Yeah. And it could be like one skincare and then maybe like one makeup okay. or like color. Okay, so if skincare this like Aquaphor count like for lips. Yeah. Okay, that's like a chapstick and then mascara yes. because my eyelashes go ham when <laughs> I really take my time. Yeah. And I feel like my eyelashes be so bold when I'm in people's face yeah. that that's all they really be looking at. Like, yeah. oh my god, your eyelashes. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't care about concealer too much if I had my lashes done. Done. Yeah. And you know, I feel like if you have mascara, I mean, you could always do like an eyeliner with the mascara. Oh, you could use the mascara finesse. to fill in your eyebrows. I see you. Yeah. That's smart. Be resourceful. Yes. <laughs> I like that. What would you use? Like if I was stranded in the island, mm -hmm. I honestly, I feel like I wouldn't want to use any makeup. <laughs> yeah. Just because every time I've gone like on vacation You're and like, I get uh -uh. like tanned, my skin looks amazing. Ooh. Yeah. But I, I too then I'm at that point I ugly. would do like maybe mascara. Because I feel like when you have your lashes done, you really don't need anything else. Like, no. it just pulls you together. It really does. Yeah. It makes you look more wide awake because yeah. your lashes just lift it to the eyes. The one thing, though, as a person of color, I feel like I have so much discoloration underneath my eyes. Yeah, or at same. least I think so. I do. So, like, a color corrector would be perfect. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Just but perfect, what would you put yeah. on top of it? You would just do it lightly? Yeah, I think for me, the peach corrector, I wear it when I go to work. Mm. I do it lightly underneath my eyes, and it completely blends into my skin. Ooh. Yeah. So, That's tight. Mm -hmm. Is it, like, very peachy instead of so, like, orange? You know, it is very peachy. I think, obviously, the deeper you are, mm -hmm. you need to use, like, an orange corrector just because... You know, it might appear a little weird underneath your eyes. Right. But for me, the peach corrector works amazing. And it just blends. I see. Yeah. I see. And then now for me, I'm going to do kind of the opposite of what Amor is doing. I like to highlight and contour after. Normally, I don't contour with creams. Mm -hmm. I like to contour with powders. But I love to highlight underneath my eyes with like a lighter concealer. I didn't used to use cream contours either. I was so scared and then I just tried it and I was like, oh my god. Because I like it under. I would be too scared to do it on top right now because I do it underneath my foundation. Yeah. And then I'll just pat it in with powder on top to set it all in. That's why I look OD right now, okay? Don't don't judge me right now. It's going to look flawless and sick. And you know, right now, <laughs> it's like a trend. People on Instagram are doing the inner of the eye and just the outer just for lifting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't drag like your face down. Right, yes. So I've been doing that lately. I've seen that on TikTok. One of the things, or the reasons why I love to brighten underneath my eyes, is if you think about like the mad girls, 
and Mac was the thing back in the day. Mm -hmm. Everybody was just Yeah, thing. and I feel like growing up, you always looked at the Mac girls like, oh my gosh, you know, they're amazing. And they are. Yeah. And their under eyes were always super bright. So to me, when I got the chance to start doing my makeup, brightening underneath my eyes was like my thing. I see. Yeah. Was it because you worked there or just because you were influenced by it? No, it just because I was influenced by it because okay. through my makeup journey, I worked for Lancome for three years and then from there I went to Ulta under Mac and then from them I worked only six months and then from there I left and I went to Smashbox. I see. Uh huh. And Dang. then uh huh. You I get know. Experience. Yes. That's what's up. And then from Smashbox I went to where I'm at now, which is for Christian Dior. For them I'm the counter manager. Honestly, I couldn't be any happier. Oh. Dior is an amazing brand. That's what's up. Yeah. I have to try more of their stuff. They have this highlighter palette I want. Yeah. So that one is exclusive to Sephora, or you can buy it also online. Oh really? But they don't sell it for Macy's. It's the backstage collection. The one with the like Dior text print. Mm hmm. Yeah, but it's pretty good. So I asked my Instagram to ask us some questions. Okay. And okay. while we're doing our makeup, I'm going to ask you the question and then I'll wait for you to answer it and then I'll answer, okay? Yes. So this question comes from Frankie and it says, What are your daily sources of inspiration for the looks that you create? I get lost in Pinterest. Pinterest is my go to place for looks and hair color and eyeshadow and outfits and everything food like anything yeah. you can think of Pinterest is just so like aesthetically pleasing to look at for me it's a vision board <laughs> Yeah. So I have a couple people I follow on Instagram, but I don't know like their names. You know those makeup pages that they, they be like from fucking people. Turkey or some yeah. shit. They don't even <laughs> have English on their profile, but it just be like pow, like the intricate avant-garde, off the wall shit you wouldn't wear every day. I love stuff like that because it's just so creative. It's like art. I could just go on and on. I gather inspiration from, from all everywhere, sources. Yeah. even the people in my life. So now I'm contouring with mineral bronzer from Dior. This is the color number six. Wait, for the question, what, what, what about you? You know, honestly, every time I have a client, obviously I ask them, you know, like what kind of makeup look they want and they show me pictures and then mm -hmm. you try to recreate to, you know, your best cap capability. But when it comes to my lash line and how I've been doing people's makeup, like for instance yourself, yes. I kind of just wing it, you know, I see your eye shape and you know what just see where it yeah takes you. especially with you like it, it's so much fun like doing your makeup just because you have so much room in your eyelids see people be saying yeah. that and I, that makes me like scared because i'm like there's so much space like i don't know what to do so i can get inspirations just by looking at an eyeshadow palette mm. or the you know I'm, mm -hmm, I'm constant on instagram youtube tiktok watching videos there's this mexican makeup artist his name is luis torres and, oh my god like, like his him. artistry is beyond this world. He inspires me. Really? To you gotta send me content. his profile. Yes, he's amazing, honestly. And he actually also has his YouTube channel. He's done makeup for celebrities, Fashion Week. His Ooh. work is impeccable. He it, yeah. He also is a hairdresser. So I think I also like him because of that, you know? Because I can relate. Yeah. I'm more as a licensed cosmetologist. Yes. I'm not licensed, but I did graduate from beauty school. Oh, I thought you were licensed this whole time. No. You didn't go take the test? I took my test and then I didn't pass it. I that shit pass, was hard. Mm -hmm, I didn't pass the written, I passed the practical. And then after that, I was just saying, like, hmm. But I need to go <laughs> back just because, you know, I spent so much money on beauty school that I'm, yeah. I can't just not go, you know? Yeah. And now the test is easier. Yeah. It's, it's all one test. Y'all do the same shit at the same time. Yeah. I know. I wish it was like that. I know, How was the you, last test? Because you had to do finger waves and all that, right? Finger waves, yeah. pin curls, fucking all the haircuts, soft wave perm. Yeah, see, we didn't have to do all of that. But we had to section the soft wave perm, but only rod one section. I think y'all have to do the whole thing now, huh? No, we only had to do like the, the, the top part. Oh, what? Yeah. I thought mm -hmm. they had to do the whole thing. And we didn't have Y'all got to do a blowout, out. though. Yeah, we on did. On a mannequin mm -hmm. head. Yeah. See, I had Princeton and he yeah. had bleached <laughs> curly hair. Oh my god, it was hard as fuck trying to do pink finger waves on damaged natural bleached hair. hair. Yeah. It was a mess. I thought I really failed because. 
Yeah, no, they cut a lot of sections or a lot of procedures when I had to take my test, which made it so much easier for me. I'm glad I made it because if not, I would have for sure waited till it changed. <laughs> it was hard, and I even after I took the written notes, I know I got an easy version, and that shit was still hard. hard. There were some questions, but I was like, oh, thank God, I know that, I know that, I know that, and I know that. But then it was some questions where I was just like, what is the Luna Manila? Was like, what yes. the fuck? type of scar is or like what type of like what <laughs> did you take your test here in Fairfield yeah in Fairfield. also did you ever hear about this one person who does a test she was like a rockerish kind of lady oh, and what? everybody kept saying like if you get her just say that you already got her so they would skip you oh my god my first time I had like a minor cold she was a meanie like really? she was so rude and I think she intimidated most of the people because she for sure intimidated me oh my god yeah and I I'm not like I'm not gonna say that well, I mean, I passed my practical, but from there, my written, I feel like I was already kind of like taken back. Yeah. yeah. That, that could mess up your day with people like that because you gotta focus. I can't even think about this lady. But I feel like my lady was, she was like about her business, mm -hmm. but she was strict with care because it was parts where I was messing up and she would come over there to see if I was gonna fix it. Cause you can mess up on your yeah. test. It's just all about how you correct it. Mm -hmm. And I messed up hell of times and she saw me every time. And so she would keep her eyes glued on me until she saw me fix it the correct way. Yeah. But she was so sweet, but she just was like with her clipboard <laughs> jotting down stuff like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is intimidating. It's very. Yeah. yeah. So for blush, I'm going to use oh, this bad, like old school blush. Like I know I probably should already touch it, but it's one of my favorite blushes. And it's the second collection that Rihanna came out with MAC. Oh, and it's wow. called Bad Girl Gone Good. And oh my gosh, this it's blush cute. is amazing. As you can see, it's all like worn wow. out and stuff. Blush be lasting but, forever. Yeah. You guys, I'm going to give you an in-depth video of how I do my makeup now because I, I realize I'm doing that. But I want to explain it to y'all because y'all probably like, what the fuck is <laughs> going on? But don't worry, I got y'all. Just bear with me. But I am showing y'all some products I don't use every day that won't be in that video. <laughs> it looks really nice. Thank like you. It. it came together, right? Yeah. It came together. At first, I was like, I'm more yeah. into it. <laughs> first, you put that foundation on. Yes. It blends yes. all together. It's really flawless. Really, really flawless. Right. And it lasts all day. Like, at the end of the day, I'll be like, dang, should I take my makeup? Mm -hmm. And the, out of all the ways I've ever done my makeup, this way lasts the longest. Longest. By the end of the day, I'm like, dang, if I had to go out right now, I would need me touch up yeah that's good which i have never been able to do so i definitely need to get this video up to you guys because it's important <laughs> shout out to her rouge and taylor made jane and another makeup girl jackie arena did it i think with the whole reverse thing i mean it's always been a thing but they were the ones who re-inspired me to do it because it's so much easier and i, I use less product and i'll crease everywhere so for me it works but i know princeton tried it a couple times and he was <laughs> like oh my god it's too much going on you know so now you can inspire me. I'm gonna go and do my makeup like that Try tomorrow. It. Yeah. See, like, I feel like what you about to do for me with the eyeshadow, mm -hmm. I feel like I have to do that for, yes. for, for Princeton yes. and you, or if you don't get it after you try it, let me know. <laughs> But Princeton was like, what the fuck? But you might understand because even my first time, it was pretty self-explanatory as you're doing it. You just do what makes sense. Yeah. You guys, he's done my eyeshadow so good. I'm going to flash a picture right here. After today, right? <laughs> you'll be like, I don't need you. <laughs> he taught me. Ew. I'm going to become bust not with the looks. Like, it's like when you, when somebody taught me how to actually roll a blunt and I looked at it and they was telling me step by yeah. step, I was like, oh, that's how you roll a blunt. And then I could just roll a blunt in a minute and a half now. But I want to get like that with freaking eyeshadow. I want it to just be like second nature. I want to be able to finesse and go outside the lines. I feel like now I need to know how to do actual shit mm -hmm. and then I could like explore beyond. I'm going to give you the foundation of how to create an eye look that you can basically change the eyelid color and it'll still work. Oh, like you can do blue, purple, like orange, that. red, so I mean, fun. you name it, yeah. And you will be able to do it with just the easy steps that I'm gonna teach you. Like on the uh, back of those compacts in the drugstore, how they be having yeah. the, like, the numbers on. Them things helped me do my first smoke yard back in the day with them Physician's Formula palettes. Okay. <laughs> from CVS and Walgreens. Physician's Formula was my jam. That was my first 
eyeliner, my first lash boosting serum, my first eyeshadow palette was all Physicians Formula. You know, I was blessed that my first ever makeup products, I started with foundation and bronzer. What? And it, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Looking at it now, my first foundation at 19 was Christian Dior. Wow. And the, like, I've come full circle and now I'm working Now you're working Dior. there? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh -huh. See, everything happens for a reason. That's crazy. How cool. Yeah. So for me, I feel like I've come to like an end to my skin. This is how I normally do my, my skin. Yes. Yes. And let me tell you, if you haven't tried the Professional Super Setter from Benefit, you're missing out. I haven't the tried it. The reason why I love this from anything that's in the market, literally, I will drench my face with it. No drips. No it nothing. sounds it's like it's so spraying amazing. so hairy. Yes. That's how this kind of sprays the Morphe luminous oh, one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try that. Is it new? I didn't know that. Yeah, it just came out maybe like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. That yeah. Makes sense then. It's thirty two dollars, which I think it's pretty good. I think the all nighter is also thirty two dollars. So oh, for really? that, I think it's a decent price. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna ask you another question okay. that also Frankie asked us, and um, his question is, how do we meet? So we met through Prince. Then. Yes. Was it our first time meeting at the shoot at Lake you Mary, know, or was for it some reason that? I I can't remember exactly like if I had already met you before. I can't remember either because I feel like I hugged you when I saw you. Maybe I knew you yeah. briefly, or maybe Princeton just talked about you. Or maybe also because I know that Princeton had a couple of shows that I went to see him. Maybe I I could have met you there. Maybe. But I think more than anything, I think that was the day that we kind of like you know cross words with each right. other. We mm -hmm. talked at the lake, Princeton. Yeah. We'll put up the photos right here. Yes. <laughs> we did, um, Princeton came out with merch for when his album had came out. We took pictures at Lake Merritt, just some random, just pop up, take some yes. quick pictures to mm -hmm. post. And it was fun, we we met, we was chilling, we was taking pictures, we got some good photos. I still wear that shirt like almost every day. <laughs> I love yeah. Merch. And then from there, I think I've always like looked at you because like, you know, you do hair and wigs and stuff. And I've always been so mesmerized at how like amazing you're, yeah. <laughs> Till this day, I've, I've always wanted and I still do. And one day I have to have a wig. Get a wig. Yeah, yeah I want to make both you. of y'all Oh my gosh, one. yes. You and your baby. I'm like, ah, uh, she just uh, is so talented when it comes to that, that I'm just so mesmerized. Yeah. yeah and then I think just recently now, with the launch of my lashes she's modeled for me and stuff and I think that has brought us a little more yeah, closer yeah for sure I'm just meeting up just to work yeah. out that's I love stuff like that I'm just like you need me to do something I'll, I'll be there <laughs> let me know I'm gonna grab a paper towel for my lips and then we could do I yes my best friend is so into astrology and stuff so one of his questions also is how can two Virgos work together <laughs> and um what? a more is a Virgo I'm yeah. a Virgo Mm -hmm. And I honestly, like yeah, I feel like a lot of the things that she does and she says, I'm like, we get each other. Yeah, I'm like, I was thinking that, or I do that, or even when we have our conversations, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, we're so alike. And it's so weird how, like, if you know a Virgo, we're super chill, super homebody. Like and I feel like that's what you are, too. I feel the same way with you, too. I feel like, for the most part, Virgos, we get along. Because I have a lot of Virgo friends that I talk to on a daily basis. Like, I have more personal Virgo friends than I do any other sign. signs. Yeah. yeah. Princeton is Virgo. Princeton is Virgo. Yeah. A lot of my beauty school <laughs> friends that I still talk to are, are Virgos. Virgos. You're a Virgo. Lena that danced with us is a Virgo. No, she did thing... those paintings in there. Oh, really? Oh, wow. She does like water paintings. Yeah. You know what's weird? One of the things that you were saying earlier when we were kind of catching up and how we're such homebodies that sometimes we don't push ourselves to do certain things. And mm -hmm. I think that's exactly how I am. Like I'll have ideas and I want to do so much. I no, feel like real. we're so capable of doing so much, but something in us as Virgos will tell us like, Oh, just chill or do I think that's because we're like perfectionists. Yes. Like we need it to be a, a certain oh way. Gosh. And like if it's not the certain way, then we ain't. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. It needs to be this mm -hmm. way. <laughs> I know. It will like irk my nerves. Yeah. Because I will have a vision and it has to come like that. 
Same. So I'm going to answer a question that one of my good friends also, Lisette, asked me. Okay. It's about my lash line, so I'm just going to include it in this yes. video. And her question is, what motivated you to start your lash brand? What has been the, the easiest and hardest part? If you had to pick your favorite lash, which would it be? And it could be any lash, either my brand or any other brand. And honestly, I think... Those are great questions, by the way. Yes. I'm constantly doing makeup, and I feel like having your own lash line was perfect because I didn't have to, you know, sell them any other lashes so, other than mine. Yeah. And that's expensive. Yeah. And, like, they be walking off with the lashes. You yeah. You don't have to keep those mm -hmm. ones, like, the palettes and yeah. the foundations. Yeah. And I think it's also a great thing because what better than your clients to promote your work mm -hmm. and also your lashes, right. you know? So if you love my lashes, you're obviously going to tell your friend, you know, go ahead and buy his lashes and stuff. I think the hardest part of coming up with the lash brand is just pushing yourself because I mean I thought about the idea on 2019 summer of 2019 and I didn't bring it into fruition until December of 2020 See, it was literally like a year done. and a half yeah like it was me myself that I was like just wait 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 and if you wait the right time will never be there so you just yeah. have to push yourself you know you gotta go for it mm -hmm. it was hard obviously dealing with everything just because you you kind of have to do it on your own yeah like i don't have the money to hire a web designer or to hire you people you know it. yeah like you just have to do it so i pushed myself and i did it you did it yes so good too like he didn't just half-assed it he like did that yes shit. you know i'm happy with the products that i, I am out. too and i'm virgo yeah. you, we're both virgo yes. so that's how you know like yes. that shit looks so good like every item so far has been like oh my god oh my god i love it i love it i love it oh i gotta get my palette Here Okay, y'all, we finna get into the eyes. I'm so excited. So we're gonna be using Jackie Ina's Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Let me grab mine. Wow. Gorgeous. Love it. Okay, so that'll be the most accurate we can get is by getting the same palette, and I'm gonna try my best to do everything he says. <laughs> I know we have different eye shapes, so it's gonna come out a little bit different, and we are two different people, so I'm gonna try my best. And tell me if you can relate. I'm that Virgo that loves to keep packaging with it. I will buy an eyeshadow palette and I won't use it for so long only because I don't want to mess it up. Like I oh. want it to stay as clean as possible. See? And I always save the boxes that go to it. I it's do so it weird. almost like that, but not. I love throwing shit away. I don't like keeping <laughs> shit. Anything with the plastic yes. film on oh my God. it. It's a it's pet peeve here. when people it's don't. Here. Like if you were gone, I would sneak <laughs> Look, and peel that yes. off. Because I get that bothered. <laughs> like, you know, when people have it on their TVs, I'd be like, oh, uh, I don't want to peel it off. Uh, it's like a scab, you just want to <laughs> peel it off. But I also keep stuff in their packages, though, until I use it. Like, I will not take it out of package. I don't care if I had it for three months. It's not coming out of package until I actually use it. For the most part, a lot of my makeup stuff, like, you see the stuff I yeah. use, like, it's still in packages. Like, so. I'm not a package person, like even when I buy shoes, even if they were expensive, I feel like I would still throw the box yeah. away. I don't, I don't know. know, I'm so weird. I keep gift bags, yeah. but I re-gift them out. I don't oh. keep it to keep yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so for, um, for this eyeshadow look, we're going to use edges, we're going to use ginger, um, how would you say this color? Wigglies. Wigglies. And then maybe a little bit of Supreme. Supreme. Yes. How and then uh, trust issues. Oh my god. Because we don't God. have no trust issues, so we gotta yes. use trust issues. <laughs> Wait, let me um try to... We're back zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see the eyes a little bit more. And now I'm just gonna follow whatever he's saying. Yeah. I'm gonna try to use similar brushes. I have hella brushes. So if none of these work, I have more over there that I could... Let me just grab them. So I'm gonna start with the Luxie 231. It's super mm -hmm. fluffy and like small. And with this, I'm gonna start with edges, which is this like burnt orange. Yeah, um, like a brick. brick. Yeah. Would that be kind of? I yeah, like it's kind it's of similar. more bulky than yours. But you know, my eyes are a little smaller, so I feel for you would be perfect. Okay. Also, I have a condition on my eyes called keratoconus, which is where your eye comes to a cone. For you to see better, you have to use hard lenses. Hard lens contacts and who wants Whoa. who wants to use a glass inside of their eyes? Whoa. So uncomfortable. So I use soft so I don't see as good. So if I could do my eye makeup, you could do it oh. and anyone can do it. Oh, honestly. We don't try. <laughs> 
first. Did you put on uh, your eyes? I didn't do nothing. I mean, it's slight concealer on it, yeah. but I got like crazy. I normally just use a concealer to prime my eyes. My concealer be creasing like a motherfucker. Should I try yes. concealer? Or, or here. Or Louise? Oh, you can use the P. Louise. You said you're setting it or not setting it? I'm not gonna set it. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it in. So with edges, I'm just gonna pick up the color. Wait, how much was it? I do like, you know, a couple. Tips. Yeah, and then I'm gonna press it in the eye. In the crease? Yeah, so you just stamp it, but not necessarily blend it, you know? So you're just pressing it in instead of blending it in. Okay. So no wipe. Shield motion, nothing, just press the color into the crease. Oh shit, this pink, I forgot to tap the brush off. <laughs> <laughs> when you are doing your makeup, tilt your head back and then put your mirror in front of you so that way you can see your crease. And it's so pronounced, like you'll be able to see it when you tilt your head back. Mine is weird because it's like when I go like that and then I look back up, it'd be like some gone. I mean like not applying. Applying, yeah. For this color, you just want to apply the color like right on your crease and then we'll go with something else to like kind of diffuse the color, you know? Are you a person that has to do one eye at a time or do you go back and forth? No, I go back and forth. I have to go back and forth yeah. because I'm like, I don't know what 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 I just did. Um, yes. I would not be able to remember. Okay, so let me put that being said over here. And do the other eye. Yes. And like, feel free to correct my ass to be like, uh uh, you need to blend that. I mean, I know we still got more to do, but just in case, um, <laughs> you can definitely tell me. No, yeah, yeah. I like the stamping method. I feel like it gives more color payoff. Yes. And I also like to go like right here in the outer corner to like add some color. Okay. I feel like my eye folds and I have a crease. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I got a couple creases going on. So if I just be like, oh no, which crease? Because, like, look. Yeah. Well, one of the good things like is crease, that how you, you apply the crease. color, yeah, you apply it a little bit higher than your crease. So when you open your eyes, you're able still to see it, but don't go too high okay. because then we're going to use another color to diffuse that, okay, to perfect. blend it out. And then from here with no added color, I'm going to take the edges and then I'm going to do like circular motions just to start like blending the color. Okay. Blending it where it's at or we're dragging it somewhere? I'm dragging it a little bit in the inner corner, but not too much. Another thing I used to do wrong with eyeshadow too is I used to be all the way up here with it. Like I'm fucking writing something down. Like, yeah, no. girl, loosen up. Yes. I didn't know that until I watched somebody video. They were like, this should be light. It shouldn't be the a dagger. Yeah, the reason why you want to grab it from the end is because you're not applying too much pressure. And you, when you want to diffuse and blend your eyeshadows, you don't want that pressure to be added. You know? Yeah, it makes sense. After I learned that, I was like, oh, oops. <laughs> My bad. Oops, he said, don't add color. Yes. No See, color. that's where I be messing up. I should be looking splotchy and muddy because I just be going ham, just putting stuff. Take your time. I think one of the things that people make mistakes is they get flustered with things and I'm like, take your time. Like, you know, if you're going to take the time to do your makeup, just do it, you know? Yeah. Like, don't brush it. Is it because I'm darker than you <laughs> that, that the mine's looks, doesn't... yours looks hella pigmented? Should I put more? Yeah, I think if anything, I'll put more. yeah, and then just like rest on it. Like press it in. Yeah. Ooh, here we go. Mm -hmm. And then from there you can just like start building the color as you go. I love how buildable this palette is. Yes. It lets you like do whatever you want. See, you're in there. I'm trying. <laughs> so one of the things that I always tell people, obviously, you know, people have years of experience. If we were to make a wig right now, I I can't expect to make the wig like you're gonna do it, you know? Sure. It takes time, it takes experience. So don't get discouraged. Not because you don't have the like the knowledge or the experience doesn't I mean that you can't do it. Just like push yourself to do it. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ready for the I'm next step? Practice, <laughs> yes. So now we're gonna get ginger, which is this softer brown bricky color. Uh huh. In a fluffier I think I have brush. This one's from uh, NYX. Oh, literally. Oh. oh, yeah, you can also use that one. I, I love the brushes that come inside of the um, eyeshadow palette. Oh, I haven't had one before. Yeah. This is basically yeah. the same. I think this one is just a. Oh, no, it's, this one's NYX. They gave me this at Ulta just for being NYX. Oh, yeah. He was like, let me go get you a gift <laughs> really quick. I was like, okay, well, yeah. yes, thank you. So I'm gonna pack the color. Ginger. Yes, ginger. And then I'm just gonna go between the color and a little bit higher okay. just to diffuse the like color. Like half and half? Yeah. Overlap? Yeah, almost overlapping, but also going a little bit higher. Okay. 
Am I stamping it again? No, no, and just blend it. Mm -hmm. And you could do circular motions or you can do white shield motions. I like ginger. Yeah. Ginger is really pretty. And I think it's your perfect transition color to diffuse a deeper color, you know? Yeah. She's very like a really versatile color. transition color. Mm -hmm. Because you can wear her by herself. You can wear her as liner. Yeah. You can wear her in the inner corner, outer corner, blade space, transition. Dang, Ginger might be that girl out of everything in this palette. <laughs> ginger and Edges. Edges is mm -hmm. like amazing. Blending is cool because when it's blended, it's blended. Yes, and you know I always go back and forth. So like now I'm gonna go back to edges, just to add a little bit more color, and then from here I'm just gonna blend it all together so that there's no lines. Okay, I feel like I went all deep. This eye looks better than this eye. I feel like. Oh, this eye. Yeah, it's more blended towards like the end. Okay. Because like right here at the edges, you can always just like flicker back and then go up. Okay. So that you can have like that same like almost cut effect. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be forgetting to tap off my brush yeah. and then so I just go in with the pigment and then all of a sudden it's all one tie-dye job. And then with the same brush that I used to get ginger, I'm gonna go in with Supreme, which is like a pink shade, just to add a little bit of like a pink hue to it. Okay. And that one is pretty much just gonna go like right on top of what we already did. Yeah, ginger. And just lightly. Ooh, that's cute. I feel like with this eye, I have more control. On how to do things. Yeah. So we're adding a little bit more color just to deepen. Every time I, I go with another color and then I blend, I always go with the original color just mm. to add the color back because sometimes you blend the color out. I see. I definitely just need to practice more. Yes. With this, you can do pretty much like anything. You can add black to do like a black smoky eye. You can do brown for a brown smoky eye. <laughs> so now we're going to get a flat brush. And normally I use my, like my setting spray mm -hmm. to get it wet and then I'm gonna go in with giggles wigglies yeah wigglies <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna grab that color and when you grab that color obviously you have to be very careful because it's red mm -hmm. and it might have a lot of fallout so what I do is I just like literally press the color into the skin Okay. On the lid? Yes. Mobile lid? Mm -hmm. How far out are we going? I'm gonna take it on the whole eyelid. Okay. I'm not gonna bring it too high up because once I take my blending brush with the one that we use for edges, mm -hmm. it's gonna diffuse the color and blend it out. Okay. But you definitely do wanna bring it on the whole lid. As you can see. Wow. Yeah. You see how? It's pretty. It's so cute. It almost looks like it's lighting up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very reflective. Yep. And then we'll go back with our first brush with no added product. This is just going to help me diffuse no other product. my lid color. No, okay. no other color. And this will help diffuse and help transition the color. See? So it just doesn't stop and start anymore. Yes. Wow. That makes so much sense. And always have your lid color in hand. You can add more color or with whatever accent, excess is in there. Because sometimes when you blend in your eyeshadows, you lose some of that pigment with blending, you know? Mm -hmm. I definitely see what you're talking about. I feel like Carly does that too. She's always going back in. Back and forth. It makes sense though because her looks be popping. This really like makes the color the color. That's my problem. I never really went back into products. I just will use it and then I move on to the next shade and wonder why it looked the way it looked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid to obviously, you know, pick up a little more color and go back and forth. It's all about adding, blending, adding, blending, adding, blending, adding, blending. Oh. Yes. So then for the next step, do you have like a finger pointing brush? I normally use something like this. Yeah. This like, is from the James Charles brush collection, the mini one. Yes, or even like this one. This is pretty simple. Oh, literally. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> and we're going to pick up Trust Issues. Oh, snap. Yes. And it's this white iridescent color, but when it touches the skin, it becomes gold. And we're going to put it in there. No. That's where I fuck up. Why do my inner corners look like other people's inner corners? Because I feel like when I apply it, like yours look like it's on skin and then your eyes start. When I do my inner corner, it look like it's already on the lid. Like I don't have like a, uh, do I corner? not have like a, th a space? Like y'all have space. Can I see your brush? Let's see. So I'm just going to have a little bit of color. And then 
medical check, so I think I do it in between, like mm. a little bit under. Oh, um, yeah. so no wonder. Mm -hmm. I was always doing it too low, but yours is like right up. Maybe that's why it makes sense. I feel like trust issues is a lot more chunky than all the other shades. Yeah, it definitely is more chunkier, and it does have a lot more fallout. Like the specs are definitely specs. Yes, chunkier. I'm getting it. Now I feel like I just naturally wanted to grab my edges, brush, and go back mm -hmm. in and blend it. I'm learning. Yay. And then from here, you can even add a little bit of the color and then just bring it into your brow bone. Oh, that's cute as fuck. Just for like a little bit of a highlight, but super lightly, almost nothing. Like barely? Yeah. Barely. I like using fan brushes when I highlight. Oh, really? They make the job easier. Yeah. So now I'm getting the Luxie 221 and it's just like a flat brush. We're gonna dip it into Credit, which is this mauve brown color. I'm just gonna dab some of the color and then I'm just gonna go underneath just to smoke it out. And literally I'm pressing into the eye, but I'm just like pressing it. Okay. And then right after you press it, then I'll go back and forth to blend the colors. Are you going all the way in or are you stopping? I'm gonna stop like right in there just because I want my eyes to kind of open but I am gonna blend it in with no added color. Sometimes if I feel like it has too much color, I'll go back and forth with my hand to release some of that color. Okay. So that I'm added into the lower lash line just to blend it in. When you were telling me about the thing with your eye, I thought you were gonna say your eyes water a lot on the sides because I was gonna be like, me too, <laughs> how do I stop it? Yeah, no, it's not common for people to have keratoconins is like one in like thousands and it's weird because my mom has keratoconins my sister has keratoconins my uncle has keratoconins and that's wild i've never even heard of it and you got everybody in your damn family <laughs> i know maybe it runs in the family uh-huh and it's weird because you know a doctor had told my mom like it's not common for people to have keratoconus oh. and like it's one in like a family i know and eventually you know the only way to cure keratoconus is by getting a cornea transplant Ooh. yeah transplant uh -huh. and <laughs> they didn't even say surgery they I said know, transplant. transplant take it out yes wow so it's not repairable then you gotta no. get a whole new one yes and you know, that. as a makeup artist, as a someone who loves makeup, I mean, I don't want to wear glasses, you know? Like, yeah. it's covering for my whole beauty. Kind of and it. yeah, that's why I'm like, uh, but if I can do it, anyone can. And it's simple things, just, you know, taking your time that will elevate your makeup to like another level. And then I'm gonna bring it a little bit down on the under eye. Pretty much that's like the eye look. What do you think? I love it. It's pretty, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's bold. Yes. You can pretty much substitute the red with any other colors. Even within this palette, there's so many options. Hella shit on for the people. lid. Yeah. There's so many lid to options. To switch. You could damn near use every shade on <clears throat> your lid. Yeah. With just no, those two shade. transitioning colors. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Icon. And then from here, I like to curl my lashes before I apply lashes. mascara or lashes, yeah. But do I do that? Because my shit already be like, Bleh. Yeah, no, your <laughs> eyelashes are naturally curled. Okay. I, um, sometimes I have a hard time with lashes and sometimes it's not hard at all. Like, it's just like, oh, it's on. <laughs> and I'm using 1990 from Piafia Co. Right after I do the liner with the glue, I go in and I oh. add mascara. Are you ambidextrous with your mascara? What does that mean? Um, when you can do it with both hands? No. Mm -hmm. I only use the right side for like I everything. had trained myself because I wasn't at first, but I didn't like how it kept coming out because of the angle of my hand. Mm -hmm. So I just made myself learn. I like you too. just have to think about which group of muscles you're using because when you're yeah. aware of the muscle. Like before Ooh, and after. Is that 90? Yes. It's 90. See, that 1990, y'all. It's perfect. One of my faves. I'm going to be using 1996. I'm going to pop them actually like a picture of them on the screen as well so you guys can see all of this stuff up close. And every link to everything will be down below. Do you make faces when you apply your mascara on your lashes? No. <laughs> me neither. But I, I'm that way now because of a reason. Oh, really? Freaking when me and Dewan used to live together. Uh huh. Uh, I was doing my mascara in the bathroom, and he walked past in the hallway, and he started dying laughing so hard to the point where he fell on the floor, just cracking up. He was like, "Oh, I looked up," and he was just like, 
<laughs> <laughs> so now I just thought it was interesting how we don't close our mouths when we do our mascara. So I literally trained myself to see if I could do it and I just never went back to the face ever again. Yeah, I know. I think that was the same thing with me. One of my friends said like, don't you hate how you always make a face when I'm like, no I don't. So then ever since I'm like, okay, no I don't. Right. So that's the look with the lashes. Oh my gosh. You guys, I wasn't, <laughs> the battery's gonna die. You guys, I realized I wasn't recording, but that is the makeup look all complete. Thank you so much for literally everything you. teaching me. I feel like now I'm going to be able to take these tips and tricks, and if not, I can just rewatch the video. But I'm definitely going to remember everything because I feel like everything's so easy. You just have to practice, like you said, and I'm just going to take everything I learned today and practice, practice, practice. Also, I want you guys to answer all the questions down below that he asked me and vice versa. We want to get to know you too. We want to be nosy. And make sure you check out his lash brand and follow him on Instagram, you guys. And hound him for some YouTube videos. We'll see how he feels about it. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And yeah, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, In slow mo. Yes, battery giving us time.